Hello everyone, in this video we'll look at the grid flow query system. So this is a system that allows you to query the dungeon after it's been built. You can use it for your gameplay purpose or you can use it for decorating your themes. So let's start by cloning a sample that we have. So after you've uh, cloned your scene, select the dungeon actor and scroll down to the advanced section. And here you see marker emitters and there's a marker emitter attached to this. So this marker emitter uses the query system to uh, query the dungeon around it and place selectively place a marker at the center of rooms and it also places uh, a marker at each tile in the uh, in the room so let's build this so these blue ones are, are attached to the marker named uh, my tile marker and there's another one in the center which is attached to this so this shows you how you can uh, say get the position of the uh, of the center of a room. So you can go ahead and change this to say if you change to caves. Now we're building it in, and this you can change the corridor. You can also query what type of a cell you like it to be on. So right now we we want this to be attached on the floors. So if I were to change this to walls, or attach it to doors, so let's look at this uh, marker emitter. So this is placed under dungeon architect content. So for this, you need to enable show plugin content and head over to sample head over to samples and under this go to da grid flow marker emitters so whenever the dungeon is built this is going to be called by dungeon architect so we get grab the query object and then we cast it to the grid flow query because this is the dungeon we're building so this would be the grid flow query and we can access all the functions so if you look at this uh, scroll down and expand the dungeon category here are all the functions you have so first up you can convert a uh, you can convert a tile coordinate to a world coordinate so if you have a coordinate in the tile map like the uh, like 2 comma 2 you can get get the world coordinate of where, where that would be in in the actual world if you have a world coordinate you can convert that to a tile coordinate so if you want to know where which tile the player is standing on just pass in the position of the player actor and you'll get the tile coordinate. Uh, likewise, you can get the cell information uh, at the tile coordinate or the world coordinate. Uh, you can get information of a entire chunk at a layout node. So what does this mean? If you open up the, if you open up the, uh, the grid flow graph and build it, you see that we have a layout node here and we have a tile map over here so if i were to select any one of these nodes in the layout a certain set of tiles in the tile map gets selected so this whole thing is considered as one chunk so there's a function called get all chunks of type uh, and then you pass in the type either a room or a cave or a corridor so what this does is it'll grab all of the uh, layout nodes of that certain type and give me the information about uh, all of the, the the chunks in the tile map uh, so that I can iterate through each one of these and then place in my markers on each tile and I can also go ahead and place something on the center of this so that's what this function does get all chunks so it's going to give me all of the chunk information I'm going to loop through it and uh, using this I break the uh, the uh, this object so that I get the individual uh, uh, variables so here I have the tile map coordinate start tile map coordinate end so this would give me if I if I were to get the chunk of this node it would give me the tile map start coordinate and the tile map end coordinate uh, so I can find the center of it by you know uh, adding them and dividing by two uh, which is what I do here and then once I have the uh, center in the tile coordinate I convert it to the world coordinate and then I emit a marker uh, with the specified name over here uh, I also go ahead and 
uh, loop through all of the tiles. So this information will also contain all of the coordinates of the tiles that belong to this chunk. So look through them, do the same thing, get the uh, uh, get the convert this coordinate into the world coordinate, and then emit a markup. But before that, we have one small check. Uh, we want to make sure that uh, the the tile is walkable or reachable. That is, it's not occluded by uh, some overlays like rocks or or trees. So you have that information here and you also want to check if the cell type is equal to the one that you specified here so we saw that we can change this to a floor vault or whatever so then finally we go ahead and emit the second marker so you can use this in marker emitters you can use this in your gameplay so now once we have emitted these markers we want to place something onto the scene so that's where the theming engine comes in so you see that the default names are my tile marker and my center marker. So if I open up the theme file, you see that I have added two, two markers here, two marker nodes. I just went right click and add marker no node and I gave in this name. And then you can attach whatever you like underneath it. But in order to visualize this, you need the viewport to know that you're using this marker emitter. So to do that, just click somewhere on the empty screen here so that you see the dungeon properties. Head over to the advanced section and underneath, uh, just add a new entry and then go ahead and give a reference to the, uh, to the marker emitter so that you can see it in the preview down here.